Hello Tubers! Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Cooper's Tie Adventures. This is Money Matters, and uh, today's segment, again, I'm going to uh, discuss uh, Bitcoin happenings this week. Um, and also, uh, at the end, uh, a subject that a lot of people have been talking about, and that's the uh, having what it is, when it is, why it is, and so forth. Anyways, um, Bitcoin's uh, up this week. Uh, 40, it was at 41.7 last I checked uh, a few minutes ago. Um, it's about 5% up for the week. Um, so what's caused that? And where's it headed? Uh, well, last week we spoke about uh, the big dumping of Grayscale's Bitcoin onto the exchanges, which in my opinion had the effect of depressing the price. You know, huge demand is coming from these ETFs. Um, massive accumulation again this week. Uh, and part of that um, obviously was uh, financed or at least coins were bought from Grayscale. So maybe a switching, you might say, out of one product into another. But that's coming to an end, guys. Um, Grayscale's down now, I believe it's uh, over 20% from their peak. And, you know, obviously the more they sell, the less uh, uh, demand there will be for them to drop their coins, let's say, onto the exchanges. Um, a lot of Grayscale's people are just going to actually stay where they are. Uh, and that's coming up soon. And how do I know that? Um, they've been averaging, Grayscale's been averaging about 500 million a day dumping coins onto the exchanges, again, being absorbed by the ETFs. And that's been cut in half down to 255 million as of Friday. So the trend line is down for them, you know, parking their coins onto the exchanges. Uh, another thing uh, that was confirmed this week is that the FTX uh, debacle, their coins have now been absorbed into the market. So there's no more supply coming from them. Uh, it was also announced this week that the U.S. government, uh, which had seized some coins for illicit activities, um, about $130 million worth, um, those coins have, uh, you know, been uh, allocated to the exchanges. And again, the, the market uh, absorbed that quite easily, let's say. So not a big depression in the price. Um, and again, Bitcoin's hanging in there tremendously, guys, from, you know, these uh, massive amount of coins that have been coming onto the exchanges for the, you know, for the various reasons mentioned. Um, and thirdly, and I, I never thought of this, but I did some research and yeah, there was an article that I came across that, you know, people can self custody their Bitcoin. It's what's in, you know, called cold storage. And prior to the ETFs, a lot of people were doing that. You know, they didn't necessarily trust the FTXs, possibly even didn't trust the Coinbase's of the world. And, you know, a lot of the, you know, Binance, Crack, and all these other uh, platforms, they thought, okay. And it's been promoted by a lot of, you know, diehards. Hey, self-custody your own coins. Well, you know something interesting, uh, and I kind of believe this. I think a lot of those people have decided, you know what? I don't want to risk losing my keys to my cold storage wallet. I don't want to, you know, what if something happened to me? How would my family ever obtain them? And I believe a lot of these cold storage guys have actually ended up flipping, selling their coins onto the, the market and rebuying uh, the ETFs. Because with an ETF, obviously, it becomes part of your estate. And uh, if it's in a tax-free account, well, heavens to Betsy, why are they worried about self-custodying versus, uh, uh, you know, the tax-free uh, IRAs, I guess they're called in Canada, TFSAs. Um, they'll still be tax-free when they're disposed of and as part of the estate. So, you know, you wouldn't, you don't have to worry about losing hardware, your keys, something happening to you without anybody knowing where the coins are. So that's probably been a bit of that too. Um, anyways, long and short of all that is, uh, the supply 
is fixed currently at 900 coins a day approximately being mined and yet the demand is thousands of coins per day well i think the writing's on the wall where where the uh, uh price is going to go now uh because the other um supplies are getting dried up and um, now a little bit of news on the minor news i was chuckling last week you know the miners got totaled uh, you know personally full of, full disclosure and again guys this isn't financial advice this is just what's you know i see happening and uh, what i'm currently doing and uh, you know my miners are mara riot and uh, clean spark as well as microstrategy as a proxy they were down tremendously last last week or, you know sorry the prior week and uh, well you know they rebounded so not totally anywhere from five to ten percent uh, for the week so that's a that's a good sign i believe um now i spoke earlier about the next big catalyst what is that in my opinion it's the halving and the halving is approximately every four years um, it's based on uh the amount of blocks that are mined meaning 210,000 blocks now that's not the amount of coins mined that's the amount of blocks that on the blockchain okay and uh, that occurs about every uh, four years and it cuts the rewards to the miners in half and that's projected to be uh, around mid-april we're about 80 days away from that occurrence the current block reward is six and a half sorry six and a, a quarter coins per uh, block and that's going to be cut down to 3.125 um, so it's cut in half and again remembering now you know the cost of production basically you know stays the same and yet the rewards are cut in half so the inefficient miners will probably unplug meaning there'll be less supply again um, and the uh, big will likely get bigger probably take over um, so that'll be an interesting uh, catalyst coming forward um, and again that occurs typically every four years and it's projected about 80 days from now uh, so what do we typically see with these halvings well about three to six months prior to the halving and this is again in from past history doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen this time but sometimes history does rhyme not you know uh doesn't necessarily repeat but it quite often rhymes they say uh, so three to six months prior, they've seen a bit of a price uh, increase. And I think we're seeing that. I know, you know, back Bitcoin was around 25 and, you know, I was mentioned to a few people, hey, it's a good time, in my opinion, to get in. And some people did, some didn't. Well, you know, now we're at 42 and it, again, it's pre-having. Um, so I still think there's a way to go for for a price increase prior to the halving. Um, now... You know with bitcoin it's volatile and so you know you do have these increases and then you have what's called retracement which they actually you know the price will drop but typically over the span of the years you've seen higher highs and higher lows so in other words when it does retrace it typically stops at a higher price than the, the prior halvings retracement let's say so uh you know well how long does this price spike go on well you know you've heard of crypto winter and then bull runs bear runs that type of thing well you know we've come through a crypto winter in my opinion uh which lasted you know almost two years let's say where the prices were somewhat quite depressed versus the all-time highs and uh they didn't have maybe much movement you know uh one way or the other but in these what i call bull runs and i'm pretty sure we're in one um they tend to last uh 12 to 18 months going forward uh after the halving so that's what i see uh you know the trend let's say going to i think um so april at the halving i can see us having a 12 to 18 month period of further price gains and some of these in the past have been parabolic so why do i keep saying dollar cost averaging you know every any time's a good time to get into bitcoin is basically the sooner the better and the reason is you know you can get tremendous movement in a day 
uh, in Bitcoin. Uh, so to have those on your side is the way to go versus waiting to see what happens. And geez, I wonder. Um, and you know, I've got good friends that have done that. Um, so uh, hats off to James, picked up a couple coins. Uh, so I mentioned about the retracements. Now, typically at the halving, you're not gonna get maybe a rocket up. You know, you could get a retracement. They tend not to last too long. Um, and in the past they could, you know, some of them have been quite violent, but uh, they're estimating this time maybe a 20% maximum retracement. So you're still gonna be in the mid thirties should it pull back. And that's from today's value. I mean, at halving, if it's 50,000, um, you know, it's maybe 40s, the, the last low we'll see for quite a while. Um, I want to go over a bit of the history on these halvings. So uh, basically the first coin, uh, sorry, the first uh, block was mined January the 3rd, 29th, or sorry, 2009. So, um, and that was... Uh, the first 50 coins was the reward at that time. And uh, there really wasn't a market for Bitcoin then, 2009. Um, there wasn't actually a transaction conducted with which I call a sale, let's say, where there was a price allocated to Bitcoin uh, until May 22nd, 2010. So over a year later from the mining of the first block, and uh, believe it or not, that, as I mentioned in prior videos, there was 10,000 Bitcoin exchanged uh, online, like through the um, blockchain, for two pizzas. And uh, interesting point, that's worth over 400 million today. So I wonder if that guy kept the, uh, kept the coins. <laughs> and the guy that had the pizzas, I sure hope he enjoyed that. But... Um, November 2012 saw the first halving and where initially there was 50 coins per block as a reward that got cut in half to 25 um, and that was November 2012 then in July 2016 the second halving occurred which took the rewards from 25 coins the coins rewarded per block down to 12 and a half uh, May of 2020 uh, so, you know, coming up to exactly maybe four years from the next halving, that was the third halving, May 2020, and that took the rewards from 12 and a half coins to six and a quarter coins, which is what it's currently at. And April is, again, roughly about 79 to 81 days away um, is the next halving, which will be the fourth halving since, you know, Bitcoin was uh, invented. Uh, brings it down from six and a quarter to 3.125 coins as the rewards. So currently roughly 900 coins a day. Well, that's going down to 450. That's the supply as well as what's ever's been mined that's in, you know, storage or available for sale. Well, you find out <laughs> most people aren't selling, they're holding on. So in order to get those coins out of the hodler's hands, they say the price has to go up and some of them dramatically up to pull them. Um, so, you know, time will tell. Now, what's happened to the pricing in these past halvings? Maybe this is an indication, guys, of where we're headed with the next halving. And that's why I thought I'd just relate this, uh, you know, what did happen in the past. Um, Again, so 2012, uh, again, the, uh, the first halving, the, uh, the price on the day of halving of Bitcoin was $12.35 per coin. 150 days later, so roughly five months later, it was at 127, so like a tenfold increase. Uh, a year later, 365 days, it was $1,003, and it peaked that cycle, that halving, at 1200 Let's jump ahead to the second halving, 2016. The price on the day of halving was $650.53. 150 days later was $758. 365 days later, a year later from the, the date of the halving, 
2518 so I think you're seeing that and then again the peak that cycle that having was 19,000 you're getting an idea of the trend here uh, which is hey there's a price on having typically five months a year and then the all-time high that cycle is is higher so that's the you know what the what the past has shown us the last having was 2020 you know a little over four years say um, coming up to that the price on the having date was eighty eight hundred and twenty one dollars wow you know that's that's a big price for bitcoin again 150 days later ten thousand nine hundred and forty three dollars a year later fifty five thousand nine eighty six and the all-time high was almost seventy thousand during that period so what's going to happen in 2024 with the uh the next having well you know indications from this past history and that's all we can really go on um, as well as our common sense and what we see happening is that it's going to be higher than it is today so you know again time will tell but i guess my point is you know don't uh don't listen to all the fud and you know this and that do do your portfolio a benefit in my opinion get a little bit of these ETFs or the proxies or something to do with the Bitcoin going forward because it is a great store of value in my opinion and uh, you'll do well by it and um, uh, you know November 6 2010 the Bitcoin actually hit and that's going back what 13 years guys a um, little over it hit a million dollar market cap you know, a million dollar market cap for a coin, people said, hey, it was worthless, it was a scam, it was going to go to zero. Well, let's jump ahead 12 years. The market cap of Bitcoin has gone from a million dollars 12 years ago to close to one trillion dollars. That is a massive, massive increase in market cap. What drives market cap, obviously, price um you know amount of product for sale on the you know on the market let's say mined and um, it just indicates to me a tremendous demand and this isn't just in north america it's worldwide bitcoin is a product that is uh is known about worldwide interestingly enough you're getting in in my opinion right now on the ground floor because the acceptance is going to be growing dramatically going forward and yet it's still a minute, I don't even think it's, it's like one-tenth of one percent of the population owns any type of Bitcoin. So the adoption rate is where it's going to really go through the roof, in my opinion, in the years ahead. And lastly, on the dates here, September 7th, 2021, El Salvador was the first country to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender in their country. Um, the country's done tremendously well since they adopted that. They've started uh, to do their own hodling for their national treasury of Bitcoin. They're issuing Bitcoin-backed uh, government bonds, which are in huge demand. Um, the country has seen a uh, dramatic drop in, you know, gang-related issues. It's more of a stable country now because their currency is stable. An interesting fact, when I did the research, 70% of their population did not, ha had, you know, no banking um, access, you know, no traditional finance, they, it's called TreadFi, um, you know, access to protect their wealth, uh, you know, at least Bitcoin, they're able to do that. So it's been widely accepted. Basically, if you're in a country that uh, doesn't allow you to do traditional banking or possibly not set up or the infrastructure as long as you've got a cell phone that works you can get involved with bitcoin so that's kind of the you know the the benefit of that for a lot of the world's population um okay uh lastly guys um here we are 80 days out and i went back and did a little research of hey we're with the other halvings uh coming up when they were 80 days away from happening what was the price from the all-time highs and this again was up to that point well 2016 bitcoin was 62 percent below the all-time high 2020 52 percent below 
the all-time high. In 2024, 42% below the all-time high. And again, that was for those periods. So, you know, here we are, um, the all-time high was 70. The halving's coming, it's 80 days out. What are we at, 42, so that's 20, that's about 40% below the all-time high. So interesting, um, maybe there's a lot of room for movement here going forward. I think there is. Okay, what do I see ahead now? Uh, Google just announced that they're allowing uh, effective Monday, January 29th, ads for the Bitcoin ETFs to be put on their platform. Well, that's huge. I mean, Google's adopted by billions of users. They're gonna see ads for Bitcoin ETFs. Um, BlackRock uh, is conducting, as we speak, uh, interviews, webinars for their investment advisors explaining how to sell the Bitcoin ETFs to their customers. What recommendation, what percentage of an investment portfolio should hold Bitcoin. You're going to see a tremendous, again, uptake, adoption of anywhere from a half a percent to 2%, 5%, maybe 10 with, you know, some people. Uh, in Bitcoin ETFs as a way to gain exposure, protect assets, store of value going forward. Um, so that's tremendous. Uh, when do I see a new all-time high coming? Uh, personally, I can see Q3, Q4 of this year. And, uh, you know, there'll be retracements, guys. It'll be, it is volatile, but again, there'll be higher highs and higher lows uh, going forward. So um, bottom line, if you're able to um, any amount of Bitcoin will do you right uh, hold on to it don't be a flipper don't be a trader in my opinion uh, slow and steady wins the race um, anyone who's ever held Bitcoin for four years has never lost money and again four years kind of coincides with you know new all-time highs havings so yeah if you if you can you know hold on to it um, yeah, you'll be, you know, richly rewarded. Anyways, um, that's it for today. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, again, you know, it's my opinion. It's not financial advice. You know, it's important you do your own research. If Bitcoin is of interest to you, you know, I tell people, hey, if you want to protect your wealth, watch some videos about Bitcoin. It'll tell you why you should be investing. And uh, again, Michael Saylor has a great interview with Tucker Carlson. I watched that many times. Um, good explanation in layman's terms, what Bitcoin is, what money is, what inflation, why you want to hold it. So um, do your research, guys. Uh, make your own decisions. And uh, of course, tell your friends about Cooper's Thai Adventures. Hit the like and subscribe. It helps the channel. Make Starlene smile. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye for now.